kiss that like, smash that subscribe, and share me. Hey guys, this is Sadie Katz of Partial Nudity, where I get the naked truth. And today I have the handsome, the talented, the way too nice, Kyle Louder. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for joining me. Sadie, hey, hi. It's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a minute, a good minute, a hot minute. It's been way too long. It feels like years. <laughs> well, I think, yeah. I think when, when was the Amityville Harvest? We shot that two years ago. Oh, my yeah. God. So, well, Kyle. Like, COVID, like, COVID kind of, I know this is a cliche thing to say now, but it's like, it's kind of the forgotten year. So, maybe it was only like a year ago that we worked together. So. <laughs> I don't, I have no idea. I mean, so Kyle is an actor and a producer. And do you direct too? Or are you producing? No, no, no. I, I, I executive produced a couple, uh, two seasons of um, Ladies of the Lake on Amazon as a producer. But I've, I've never directed. No. Okay. Well, there are some goals. Uh, you've been on Days of Our Life for 20 years. Well, not so. <laughs> Not solidly. I've been on and off that show. I started, that was the first job I ever had. I was 19 when I joined that show uh, in 2000. So do the math. Uh, so but, uh, how many episodes did you do again? How many episodes are you on? I think, I don't know, the, somebody, I didn't, I didn't know this. Somebody told me like on my IMDb page that I, it's something like 18, like 1,800 episodes or something like that on that show. Damn. He's yeah. actually the most professional person on set and like really looking at his lines and it's amazing. But I didn't have Kyle on for any of those reasons. I had him on because he is also a single dad. And I did one of my very first episodes of Partial Nudity. I'm just going to turn off my phone here. Was um, an episode about why you should not date single dads. Now. Okay. I feel like Kyle needs to come in because and have a good rebuttal. But I think some of it has to do with the fact that the single dads I dated, you guys are always so super. So first of all, how old is your daughter? She is 11. I already mentioned this is before her period. She's a perfect specimen of a daughter right now. We'll see. I, I'm going to assume. So, okay. And how, when did you and, and her mom separate? Oh, God. Uh, Ari and I uh, separated, I think, 2012. Okay. Um, we were married for 13 years. Oh, wow. And so we, were, we were together for, we were married for 12, together for 13. Yeah, that's what it was. And so how, how old was your daughter then? She was only two. So she has, Izzy has no, um, and I kind of, I don't know, good or bad, right or wrong, I think it's a good thing. She has no memory of, of her mom and dad ever being together. Um, mm -hmm. So there was no like traumatic, you know, uh, event in her life where she, you know, remembers being in the house with mom and dad and we're like a family and then dad has to move out and everything. It's just, she has no memory of, of that. So she's just always, you know, and then Ari is still with her boyfriend that she, um, that she had, you know, back then or that she was just starting to date. So, um, you know, Izzy has always- Is he hot as you? He's a good looking dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but um that's not weird it's, it's like saying i'm good looking too that's how that's not how i meant it at all i love uh, kyle's so modest that when i it, the first thing i remember when i met you and i went so were you um the quarterback of your football team the, the captain and prom king you go yeah how'd you know and i'm like <laughs> well, i have i tell people all the time that i have like one of the most like 90s movie cliche high school experience. <laughs> I'm like, uh, because I would cast you as a quarterback and I would cast you as the prom king, um, which is cool. Prom king, don't be the queen. You can be if you want now. Though. Nowadays, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, are we allowed to say prom king and queen or is now is going to be prom they? Uh, that's a road that I don't really want to go down <laughs> for fear of being canceled. I, I right. Don't. I, I'm trying to be canceled, but no, I need more people to watch the show first. Maybe you're uncanceled. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, did you meet my personality? This is who I am. Um, so 
I had said that I always used to, so being a single mom, every time I always thought, oh, I'm going to date a single dad. And the difference was I would go to like a single dad's house and they would have like giant pictures of their kids all over the house. And they were always like the most super, super single dad. And everyone was obsessed with them being a single dad. And I think I had some jealousy about it because I feel like I would be the single mom at, at the high school or grade school and no one would want to talk to me. The moms were like, stay the fuck away from my husband, which I wasn't <laughs> like that at all. Um, but that was a thing. And the dads were like, fuck, stay away from me. My wife's going to get pissed. But then the single dads, Jesus Christ, they were like saints. Do you feel like there's a big difference? Do, do you pick up on that? Do you feel like it's deserved? Yeah. Interesting. That's an interesting take. I, I'm going to be blunt. I don't, I've never looked at it that way. And I, maybe, maybe, yeah, I'm not aware of, aware of that. I mean, look, I don't know to break it down. I obviously don't know what it's like to be a single mom. So I don't have a frame of reference for that. I mean, ultimately I well, going back to how you started that. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just me and my girl here in the house. And, and yeah, I got, I don't have pictures up everywhere of her. I have like a dedicated little uh, so you're not like the guy I, I dated this guy super successful super handsome and I had a lot of fun with him but I show up at his house and he's got the size of his couch huge giant pictures of his two kids that were adorable but I was like where where's there a room if for a picture for me anywhere here every <laughs> wall was like and I'm like I don't know if I, I'll ever fit into this guy's life well, like I think I think we're getting down to I think we're getting down to a point here which is which is you know I guess as a single dad I have no hesitation whatsoever about saying that the most important woman in my life is my daughter you know <laughs> but I don't think but that that comes with a conversation afterwards because I don't even think there's anything inherently wrong with that I think that if a father didn't feel that way something was is wrong with him Right? right. But it doesn't mean that there's, I can only speak for myself, right? I'm not going to, I'm not an expert on fatherhood nor single fatherhood at all. So from my own point of view, in my own life, yes, I mean, unequivocally, my daughter is the most important person in my life. Right. You know, 100%. But yeah. That doesn't, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that there's no room. It doesn't mean I'm all filled up with love and I have no more room for anybody else. You know what right. I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a very good point. I, I think mine was just more the instinct of this is a, a thing, even with being a single mom. But I think I, I always felt, and you could tell me that single dads, like my dad, you know, uh, half raised me at times and he was really content with our life together. My dad never, my dad was very handsome. He never dated anyone because he was kind of like, what did he want to do on a Saturday? Take me to Disneyland. I, okay, so I can relate to this. Okay. So I, um, after I was in a relationship for about four years, wonderful, serious relationship for about four years after my marriage ended. And, and then after, and I loved, you know, it was Izzy, myself and my girlfriend at the time. And, and, and we had a wonderful relationship, all three of us. And, and for how long? Sorry, I, I... for about for about four years. Okay, so. and and but so and we had a wonderful time, all being together and, and and making memories together and what have you. But after that relationship ended, I I did make it a point to say, and this was both for actually I would say it, it was mostly for personal reasons. It was about me, but I made a choice not. I said I'm I'm done dating for a while. And no no dating, no sex, no. It was really. A time for me to kind of to figure out who I am not in a relationship because I I got married I started dating my ex-wife and we got married when I was 21 years old and then and that was your first wife right yes well she was only, older than you right yes yeah I've only had one one wife but oh but, yeah okay yeah but so I so I was with Ari um I keep saying her name because people know who she is she's on days of our lives she's right her. But she, so I was with her from 21 until about 35, 36. Oh, she's, so you're, she's, Ari is, okay, I got That's it. it. And That's then, it, okay. Yeah, I don't so, know why I thought I read something that you were married twice, but. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to so, yell at my research team. 
That's a, <laughs> no, no, no. One and only time. So, okay. and then after that, I, I, I joined another relationship fairly soon after, after the marriage. And like I said, I was in that one for four years. And so from 21 until about 38, oh, wow. I was with, I was with someone whether a marriage or a serious relationship. Does that mean you only had sex with like five with five different women or were you a horn dog in high school? No, I didn't have, I think I've, I've lost my virginity. My virginity. My virginity. <laughs> virginity. That was, that was it. That was, and then no, I mean, if you want to go down that road. <laughs> we're already here. <laughs> I, uh, I've always been, well, a serial monogamist, to right. be honest, because I got and so I only had sex a uh, few times in high school. That's it with the same person, and then I went to college and had a, I immediately got a college girlfriend, and and was only with her, and then I left college after a year to move out to L.A. to start my career. That's when I. I started sleeping with multiple people and kind of sowing my wild oats, yeah. like, as they say. Um, but even then, it wasn't, I've never been that guy, right or wrong, good or bad. It is like, I, it's just, I've never really, it, that never really interest, interested me that much. Um, and then I've always, I've always been the guy that likes to, <laughs> this is going to sound, I, I don't, I never really, I so it's hard. To. It's like hard to verbalize, but I've, I've, I've always been the guy that likes to be with someone, to share my, my life with someone, as opposed to going like, I just want to have sex with as many different women as possible. Right. Um, maybe that's not recommended for a young guy. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's right or wrong or if it's good or bad. It just That was just kind of my thing. I mean, I did have some fun, I guess you want to call it. When I first moved to LA, I was, I was in the modeling game and, and traveled a lot and met a lot of beautiful women, and I did that. Um, God, models, dating models, like straight up models is fucking the worst, right? I didn't say I dated them. It was more oh. just a lot of one was the sex <laughs> Was the sex kind of neurotic or they're young? They wanted to be impressive. No, you're young. What was I? We were, we were 19, 20. Like oh, your you models. Know yeah. what you, what you know about anything at that age, right? I, I don't, I don't know. It was like a lot of fun is what right. I'm trying to say. But I very quickly, um, uh, let's put it this way. I, I, a couple years later, I'm on days of our lives and I start, you know, uh, working with Ari. Yes. It was a showmance as they call it. Um, and I, and I very quickly, like I met her, I just knew it. I was like, this is, I want to marry this woman. She's everything. To me. From hello. I, Did you say from, I know it wasn't from hello because I got on that show when I was 19, like I said, and I knew her, I worked with her and I knew her for about a year and a half on the show. So it wasn't like from hello, but we started to work together more. We started to spend more time with each other kind of outside the show. Right. And that's when I was like, really? Yeah. And we built, built a relationship from there. Um, and yeah, got engaged and, and got married. And like I said, we had, we lasted, <laughs> lasted. No, we had a wonderful time. We um, <laughs> a good marriage. I want to say we lasted 12 right. years, but no, 13 years as a child. I grew up with her. Like, I mean, sure, uh, I, was, yeah. I was 21 to 35. I mean, that is a chunk, 34, 35, I don't remember. But 21 to 34, 35, that is a chunk of your growing up, right? So yeah. that was, she, and that is why to this She day, made you into a man. Well, she took I you from a, a boy to a man and then being a, a dad. Yeah. I did, I learned a lot from yeah. her. Um, and I learned a lot about how to be a good man, a good husband. A good father, but here's the thing. She, that's why to this day, um, we didn't get divorced because of any kind of like major trauma or loss of trust or anything. I mean, we honestly we got married so young. I was 21, she was 26. It can be kind of I don't want to simplify a, a complicated situation, uh, but if you were to, I think the overall generalization of it is that we just kind of it's that age old cliche. We just kind of grew apart, you know, because you, you grow up so much from your early twenties to your mid thirties. Right. Yeah. You're and not even the same person really. Right. And you yeah. either, you either grow with somebody or you find that you, you really love someone and, and you would take a bullet. Did she get fat and you were just like, ew. 
Have you seen her? <laughs> I have. She's hot as hell. Absolutely. Absolutely <laughs> you always say nice things about her, which is really cool. Well, because, well, it's not, and this is not, look, anybody who knows me personally, no, it's not an act. It's not me trying right. to be correct or put on a show. This woman is, she look, she's the mother of my kid, and I grew up with her. I know, I've known her since I was a teenager, literally. That is why to this day, like I, I was just saying, you know, we didn't, we just grew apart. And, and it was that thing where I looked at her and was like, look, I would take a bullet for you. To this day, I take a bullet for her. She's mm -hmm. one of my best friends and the mother of my kid. That is Are you making an offer here? <laughs> we're very close is my point. We're, we're the best friends. <laughs> but here's, I, think here's a good, I think here's a good thing for, for a lot of people. I'm not trying to give advice. I hate giving advice. Unless no, give know. advice. That's what okay. you're on the show. I'm just, just trying to bust your balls because Kyle is like, literally you are a enigma <laughs> like you want like when i see you i want to be mean to you like you're the douche you're, you're good looking <laughs> look at your stupid muscles and you're all tan and stuff and then you're so nice and i'm like god damn it kyle i have a good mommy <laughs> you must have i'm like what no, um, yeah you, you could tell you came from a good family so like attracts yeah, like i think ultimately you know for me the way i live my life is i don't i i think holding grudges is, and again, I'm not judging anybody when I say this, I, I, this is all about me, okay, and my, or, or it's all about me. It's always about you, Kyle. What I meant was, I, I can only <laughs> speak from my own experience. I think at the end of the day, for me, it's been like, yes, Ari was, was somebody that, you know, I didn't, we were just growing apart, and I said, look, I would do anything for you, but, but like, we're not, you're not my person. I'm not her person. Was, so weird. you broke up with her or was no, it no, kind no, of no. neutral? It was, it was, it was, I think to be, to be honestly fair. Um, I'm not going to say who started it just cause I really don't remember. I think it was right. just a, like a, 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 an organic, authentic dissolution of a relationship and a marriage naturally, which in retrospect was the best thing that ever happened to both of us. Because I believe that our relationship now, the way it is and the context that it is, it has been and will continue to be is we get the best versions of each other, right? right. And, and yeah. that is, so again, the advice that I was saying before is what has worked for me is look, you know, if you are divorced with someone um, and let's say you got divorced from somebody in a very traumatic way, I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying that it was good or that I condone it. But what I'm saying is you got divorced and you're no longer with that person anymore. But if you share a kid together, mm -hmm for heaven's sakes, find it within your humanity, whatever that relationship can be, find a solid ground of a relationship with your ex for the sake of your kid, right. because that is ultimately all that matters, okay? You know, have your private shit or whatever it is with your, with your ex spouse or your ex lover or, you know, the father or the mother of your kid. Have that in a personal way with him or her or with yourself in your own time. But ultimately, you know, you have a responsibility as a parent. You're raising a human being that is going to grow up and, and be a citizen of this world. And I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not standing on a soapbox. I can hear myself right now. And I'm you can talking. stand on a soapbox. I'm no, gonna, I'll that. kick you off in a second. I don't want to be on a soapbox. I don't, <laughs> don't want to be self-righteous about it. But I just believe as a parent, you have a responsibility that is bigger than you and your bullshit. A hundred percent. And also, I mean, unfortunately my ex went the other way of being heartbroken and like not being in my son's life. And, and you know what? It, and look, it I, 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 I'm, it, I'm, I'm, it, I'm listening to myself speak. I don't, I'm not judging anybody right now. If you have, some people have very traumatic and like, and I, you know, I know, I agree with you. You're an asshole of a human. If you downgrade the other person and that's your baby mama or baby daddy, like, and like, honestly, I'm not saying, it just ruins their to, life. Yeah, I'm not saying you have to look at your ex and be like, they're a good person. No, they could be a shitty person. But and you should that, be nice. But, but it's like, find the strength within yourself as a human being to say, they're a shitty person. They did some fucked up things to me. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm sure in some cases it was very serious. Some people have been mentally and physically, emotionally abused. That's right. horrible. Okay, but I'm saying if you have a child, Find a way, however you can, not to be crass or callous about it, but always just remember your kid. Yeah, you know? just remember Agreed. because the kid's relationship with with your ex, you know, try to cultivate that in some right. way because you don't, you know, don't ruin your relationship 
if your kid has a good relationship with your ex, don't fuck that up, is all I'm trying to say, because that's not fair to your kid. And, and I think that that's, you know, luckily, I didn't, I didn't go through that. So I don't want to be disrespectful and, and tell people what to do, because I don't have any frame of reference for that. But I do know, I do have a frame of reference for the fact that if you're a single parent, and you have a child, your sole responsibility is to be the best freaking person you can be for your kids so they can be the best freaking person there could they can be because they're going to grow up and go out in this world and you don't want your kid to go out in, into this world and be an asshole there you know or, or to be a a emotionally disturbed carrying baggage that you created for them because a baby's not born with baggage Right. So don't create baggage for your kid is all I'm trying to say. And and I get passionate about if she this. does, you should totally kick her to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> like fuck I'm, you, bitch. Done, like I said, get I'm out done, of here. <laughs> I'm done with the 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 self-righteous uh soapbox shit. Well, do you think that you're such a good so Kyle, like do you ever meet girls and then they they that had great dads and then every time they meet anyone, they never live up to the dad. Like there's something always, no matter how great of a parent you are, there's something always that the kid's like, well, my parents had the greatest marriage or my dad was the, the greatest guy and I can't find someone like that. Well, I think it's, it's a great point. I think it, at the end of the day, um, you know, like I was saying earlier on it is as a, as a father, I can't speak to being a mom, obviously. Right. So I think I'll speak from the father's standpoint, especially with a little girl. Um, I stand by what I said before that just be the example of, of a good man and whatever, and, and, you know, every, anything and everything that that is, whatever that is for you, be the example of a good man. I think ultimately, you know, the, the daughter is going to grow up. And again, this has not happened yet. My, my kid is still 11, but at the same time, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with being the example of what a good man is for a little girl. Right. And you know, obviously, I don't inherently, I think as a result of that, I don't think there's anything wrong with a, with a, a, a girl growing up into a woman that has a lot of, you know, high standards. And, you know, I think that that might save them from settling in a regard. Now, look, nobody's perfect. And I think sidebar to this, I tell Izzy all the time that I'm not perfect. In fact, a lot, I'm very open with her in conversations where if I'm wrong about something or I mess up or make a mistake, I tell her flat out, I was like, daddy's not perfect. And I don't have all the answers. And I think that that is equally as important to her to say, look, mm -hmm. just like you as a kid, as a grown man, I'm still doing the best I can. And I'm learning every single day. So I don't, I don't want to paint this picture for her that I am a finished product of perfection that she needs to compare every other boy and ultimately man to in her life. And, and I tell, not maybe not verbatim, but I communicate that with her. You know, I think that inherently what is very strong and powerful is a man or just a human being in general that is every day striving to be the, the, the highest ideal of themselves that they can possibly be. That is not to say that you will be perfect and not make mistakes. I think, I tell Lizzie all the time, there is no such thing as a mistake or failure. Everything is a learning process or, or you know, it is, it is something that is, comes into our attention that makes us aware of where we need to put a little bit more work in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that it's equally, in, in addition to the pillar qualities of kindness and, and acceptance and- gentle, Where did you grow up? New, where did you grow up? New York. Part of New York. Is it upstate? Uh, half an hour north of Manhattan in Westchester County. Wow. Yeah. So you're, I mean, your family put in you these great values. Well, so. I, think, I think ultimately, you know, my family preached vulnerability and sensitivity. And ultimately what that means is, is, you know, being, you know, I grew up with all boys. It was my mom and then dad and three boys. There was a lot of testimony. Oh, really? There was a what lot are your brothers like? They're like me. They're the know? same. Well, well, with, with obvious varying degrees of personality traits, of course, I mean, all three of us are very different people on, the, on, you know, inherently, but I think we all were raised, you know, my dad uh, is, you know, and was growing up a, a man that is uber successful in life. Um, what does he do? 
He's he, well, he's retired now, but he was a very successful corporate executive at, at Reader's Digest and IBM. And oh, nice. but the point I the point I was trying to make is that he's he was, you know, growing up with him, a man, a pillar of of success in terms of financial success and 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 business success. But also, he was he was a kind man, a, a sensitive man, a vulnerable man, a generous man, and 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 I think that we, I, I keep saying I think I know for a fact that we were all raised with this this idea of you can be manly and virile and love sports and and man stuff, but you can also cry and you can also talk about your feelings and you can also oh, be- gross Kyle stop being so well adjusted <laughs> I know I'm going there <laughs> I'm like no you can't it's that's the one thing whenever I act with a man and he starts to cry which is like you know in acting you're like yes I can cry on cue especially during soap operas like that's a mess thing I always secretly go Jesus Christ stop being so intense I'm a sexist Kyle knows this. I'm well, I'm look, super I mean, sexist. <laughs> I'm not saying, I, I, I do have to say this, and I really mean. It. I'm, not, I'm not saying that that's the only way to be, but uh, but I, I think that for me, I can only. It's a great it. way. <laughs> well, look, I, I think I think at the end of the day, you know, I I just strive to be a very authentic person. And look, I'm not. I went through phases. Okay, again, I think I'm a 40 year old man sitting here right now, having learned a lot from making right. a lot of very bad decisions. Let's just call it out right now. Okay, I was raised with with great values and, and a great childhood, and I've always had a very firm bedrock of what I'm talking about right now. However, growing up, I made look again. I repeat, I made some really hurtful, bad decisions. That C you got in English was really upsetting. <laughs> yes. It's I mean, so but you made a lot of like, I mean, obviously the type of work that you do, it's beyond just being an actor, being a regular on a series and it's especially a soap opera. Like that's a really disciplined, every actor I've met, super disciplined, kind, not like, they're not like, you know, a mess, at least the ones I've met are, I, I always am like, wow, their work ethic is amazing. <laughs> this is so great. So what do you do now? So are you, are you dating now? Are you back in the wagon? I am. I've, after I am with somebody for the first time in four, almost four years. So where did you meet her? The honest to God, crazy truth of that yeah. is that my ex-wife Ari introduced us. <laughs> oh my god kyle i love you so much like i don't know if there's another kyle out there like well it has nothing to do with me Look that's at her. the sweetest well and she's amazing too and she is very beautiful and i did watch her acting real and she's really talented yeah. i stalked her <laughs> um so yeah. okay so you meet the girl the your ex is already approved which is amazing that's the best you know what that is the biggest no, you're, calling you're speaking, card. You're, you are speaking to something that I've actually talked to with, with um, my current uh, woman. I will not be revealing her name just yet. Just uh, yet. Okay. So the first date. So she's obviously friends with your well, okay, Yeah. So th this is what I was going to say about it. So I was, uh, I was out of town on a, on a press tour for a film of mine that just came out. And, and What's the film? It's, uh, it's called The Ravine. It was, it was it released in theaters in a limited release, uh, it's hitting the film festival circuit now. Nice. And then once it once it comes to streaming, I'll let everybody know. So okay. anyway, I was I was right. on a, a press tour in the Midwest for that. I was gone for like two weeks, and Ari uh, calls me and she's like, "I got somebody you got to meet." Of course, I actually this was a text thread because I still have the text thread. I think it's yeah. hilarious. She's like, I, I, you know, type, she's like, I, "I have somebody I want you to meet." Of course, I get right back, and this is all true. I have the text thread proof on my phone. And I'm like, I'm not interested. Because I've got, quick side note, I've, I've gotten to this place in my life. I heard something a while back that really resonated with me when I was in my, my forced celibate single phase, right. uh, finding myself or whatever you want to call it, where it says, do not get into a relationship until you are just as happy out of the relationship as you are in it. You know, meaning don't get into a relationship because you're lonely or to 
fill a void or to relieve a lack that you have or something. Uh, otherwise, you'll develop an immediate codependency on this person. Your happiness and your joy, your peace will. I lie thought that's a relationship you. now, so no. not happy. Co codependency is. That Oops, <laughs> I'm a Libra. Oops. So, anyway, so I, but I kind of took that as I do to extremes, and like one year of this four single singlehood and celibacy turned into like four. <laughs> right. um, but. I so did, you didn't I, have sex for four years? No, 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 no. Oh, I was like, huh? I did, I, did, I did casually date uh, in there, but I just was like, I don't, you know, I don't want to get into that. But the point, I was like, I was with people physically, emotionally, was dating a little bit, but it never really went anywhere. Um, so anyway, back to, I'm, you know. You get I'm, this text, you say no. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, so I get this right. text, I'm like, no, I'm just not, I don't want that in my life. I'm just, my life is really good. I'm, I'm my, my work is the best it's ever been. My fatherhood is, I just moved to an awesome new place. And, and I'm anyway, my life is in a great place. And I'm like, I don't want a relationship right now. It's, I don't even want to try. So she's anyway, she sends a picture over and she's like, I don't know. She's really great. She's really amazing. And then, uh, so I'm like, okay, well, look, Ari knows me. She's Ari's an amazing woman. So if she says she's good. All right. I'll, I'll be open and I'll meet her come to find out that my daughter is like in love with this woman as well. And this woman loves my daughter and everybody's like getting along already, which- There's we'll, a lot of pressure in that though, right? We'll, we'll, get, we'll get to yeah. it. In, we'll get to this in a second because it's going to be relevant. But that as a single dad is like a huge hurdle because if you're a single dad and you really start to like some woman or you're falling in love with them and you've been dating for a while, then comes this thing where you're like, well, my kid, has to like this person because the kid, my, my child comes first. And I really, you know, I, I really want there to be a synergy between this person that I'm with now and then my child and I want us to all get along. And so that's a, but that usually comes down the road, right? Right. So the fact that there is already this built in, like my daughter and this woman are like fast friends now <laughs> and like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, then that's kind of taken care of. So anyway, I, I get home. Normally you have a window, right? Like you have to date someone for so long before they're. Yeah. Or, you, or you, yeah. you're with somebody for a certain amount of time. You're like, God, I really like them. And I want to, I want to commit to them fully now. And, and But if that's going to happen, we're going to have to spend time with, you know, my kid's going to have to come along and we're going to have to all be together and see what that's like. And it's a thing. Right. Uh, so, but again, that's, that was like built in. You know, it was like built-in cabinets, man. <laughs> no installation necessary. There is this beautiful woman. She's yeah. funny. My ex likes her and the kids already approved. Yeah. So I get yeah. home, I get home for the press tour and, and unbeknownst to me, well, I'm not, I, I wasn't born yesterday. I knew that a party was set up as kind of like a, oh, a, you a know, party a hookup. by a hookup party. There's a hookup party, you know, not, yeah, where we're supposed to meet. I knew, I knew what this was. I'm not right. an idiot. I, I didn't fall off the turnip truck yesterday. Right. So I'm like, uh, so I'm like, whatever. I know what this is, but we're all gonna drink some margaritas. I think it was Taco Tuesday or something. I don't like that. So yeah, I I, I saw her and I was like, oh god, I'm in trouble. Because you know, look, I'm not making it all about physicality, but let's freaking be real, people. Your initial physical, you know, you haven't talk to them yet but you know across the room type thing you're like oh geez okay if she's even half sweet and intelligent and an awesome person that i'm i'm in so, well you're you're loved up your face kind of flushes when you talk about her flushing right now look at I me now it's so cute oh my oh, goodness my yeah so then we, <laughs> we started talking and and then um you know i had to see her again and then we that like had to, I really, I had to, I really wanted to. So we, uh, a few days later, we went out and had our first official date and yeah, I'm just, I'm still in it. I'm just, she's amazing. She's absolutely incredible. I'm, it's been a long time for me. And I really feel at this point in time in my life, I'm really ready for a relationship. I would say even just a year ago, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it at all. But right. so, so now, okay. So when you, when you have not been in a relationship and you've just 
wanted to have fun. I'm assuming, did you always tell people right when you met them that you were a single dad? If you're like just hooking up yes. basically? Yes. You did. And did I, I think that a lot of women, there's a lot of women that are like, oh my God, he's so great. And he's such a good dad. And that, do you think that that changes like instantly instead of just dating you and, and having fun with you that when you're single dad for I know for me when I met people especially at first when I was really started to date single dads I would immediately be like boy they're like their husband material like it, it was hard to put them in another box so maybe that's why I had some issues where I was like what am I doing here and because I would realize that the single dad normally wasn't really looking for a relationship like I okay so I always yes two parts number one I, I would always tell people that I'm a dad just because I, I think that's kind of a big deal yeah yeah you know and you don't want to like be let's say you hit it off on that first date and then you go to the second the third and then and then you know the the two parties involved are starting to maybe fall for each other a little bit and then it's like oh by the way so I have a kid yeah. new like because then that woman might be, or, you know, or it could work, work both ways, you know, for the man or the woman, but like the person that hears that the other person has a child, like weeks after the fact, or even days after the, or dates, a few dates after the fact, I don't think that's fair because there's some people that- Kyle, you're only allowed to do two more quotes and then you're kicked out. I do this a lot. You're, you're, you're the quote guy. You're quote guy. Hands behind the back, but then I got to <laughs> So I think, I think, yeah, I, okay. I don't want to ramble. Basically, I think it's for me, humbly, it's important to say right off the bat. But even if you're just having sex with someone, I mean, I always told well, everyone I, I was a mom well, because I can't I, help it. I, I'm not, this is just how I've always operated again. And I, I repeat, it's not that I've done this a lot, right. <laughs> but, but I've, I've never just, there's always been a conversation leading up to the, the going home that, you know so i How's would say the conversation go <laughs> you know, i, 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 I want to know <laughs> your whole thing is not having game because you don't have to so you're probably just like super nice about it i right? don't have game i know that, that that sounds like you know it's like oh I'm, I'm trying to be you know i'm trying to be cute and vulnerable no i'm being fucking honest i don't i don't have like i don't I got married at 21. You know what I mean? Right. It, it's, I didn't get experience in terms of like going into a bar and, and, you know, I also like, I started dating with Ari. I started dating the woman I, I was working with. I already knew her right. for a year and a half. I've hung out with her. That, that's dating with training wheels. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> it was like, we know each other already. I don't have to. We play. already kissed when I woke up from a coma. <laughs> your twin sister so but yeah. just, juxtaposed to you know where i am now it, it's and it could look it's not about playing games that's or being manipulative right. that's not what i'm saying at all but it just comes down to like that uncharted territory of saying oh like i'm dating somebody that i didn't that i didn't know beforehand right. or or that i don't uh you know that i, I don't work with them <laughs> or right. i don't you know it's so it's it's new for me in a way. I mean, and I think this stuff, you know, when I first, like I was saying, when I first moved to LA, when I was modeling and, and that stuff, that doesn't count because that's just kids looking for a good you time. You were young. You were young. Yeah, yeah. I get the end of the so day. I, but Can I, I count that all about my twenties and my thirties? Just like scratch. <laughs> maybe I, maybe I got around the block a little bit, but, um, but I was young. <laughs> to, to, get back, to get back to your point, I, I think, yeah, for me, I don't care. I never approached, some, even if I was approaching something like I just wanted to have fun tonight i always put it out there i was like look i didn't just <laughs> i want to hear i i'm trying to hear I'll say, <laughs> i wasn't gonna do it i wasn't gonna you do were it. gonna do the air quotes no, I, was doing <laughs> I was doing that no what i meant what i was gonna say was i also didn't just sit down and be like hi i'm a father <laughs> like it, that's not what i'm saying either hey there my name is kyle you may know me from <laughs> down and you know you buy the you know can i buy you a drink sit down next to them you to the to the woman i started talking with her and, and getting to know her like you you would meet them at a bar are you are you bar guy i'm not bar guy because <laughs> you can't really do internet dating when people know you. no i didn't that's I the didn't problem right dating. you get on and someone's like 
Well, oh. here's the thing with that. And look, I'm not saying I'm Brad Pitt by any stretch of the imagination, but 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 I do have a job that that people people know me. <laughs> I yeah. always say that without well, saying. because I mean. For, I already told you, my aunt was like, oh my God. And I mean, soap operas are a whole other level. I, I know you do other things, obviously, and like lifetime stuff and you know, bigger movies, smaller movie, everything. But those, those shows, a lot of the women have been watching since their moms were watching. So they've been on for so long. No, these shows are like family heirlooms. They're like, yeah, they pass them down from like, grandmother to mother to daughter to granddaughter like it's a yeah it's a thing I I only watched soap operas for a little period of my life I think when I was nursing my son because I was just sitting down and I was like these are not for me I'm crying all the goddamn time because I'm such a crying and I was like so nervous the next day of like I wonder I wonder what's going to happen is she going to have the baby he's an evil guy I don't know and then the next day soap operas soap operas were what like it was like reality. I did it. Another crowd. reality television soap operas. Like what reality television now? You have like what? It, name the show: The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. The like. I do man. love The Bachelor. What you should have gone on The Bachelor. Think, think, about, think about what these these like reality shows. They're like train wrecks, you know, right. and like you can't look or car wreck. You can't look away from them. No. In terms of like the exploration of like the human condition and like people watch these shows because they're like they want to see what kind of effed up crap like these people are going to go through next and like <laughs> they love it's it's almost again no judgment but kind of judging it a little like it's almost a sick mentality like people love watching people people's lives fall, fall apart you know and it and it's well it's, i it's, loved the bachelor for another reason but well, you're right I'm saying, okay let me stop myself and say there's there's that's not the only reason why these people but you do fun. watch it to kind of make fun of people i love the idea of like a girl crying hysterically she's been there three days and she's like i just i just well, love okay. him so, so what much. I, the, the point is that, that that's before reality television that's what so operas were even though they were scripted I mean, let's be honest, reality television is scripted too. Folks. Yeah, it's super let's scripted. Not, let's, okay. not, let's not fool ourselves. I don't just roll the camera and say, yeah, you know. So and they're really the mean and manipulative and they're also yeah. boozing everyone up. So well, look, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to turn this into a reality show bashing session. What I'm just trying to say is that ultimately soap opera, in my humble opinion, for since the 60s is when they really kind of started coming into popularity is that was like the original reality television where people loved oh, to yeah. turn it on and watch people. Like it was a heightened, it's a heightened sense of reality and the drama in reality. And I think that right. that is, that was the proverbial train wreck, car wreck that people just wanted to turn on every day and just be like, just why, that's why people watch the news. I don't care if it's CNN or Fox News. I don't care which way you lean. And the fact of the matter is this is a very, dramatized version of actual events that are going right, on. Right. There's, a, there's a bias towards fear and drama and manipulation and what have you. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's good or bad, right or wrong, it just is. And that's ultimately why soap operas have turned into, over the years, turned into and remain such a, a cult-like, that's not the right word. People are very, are, are, are very into their show. If you're yeah. into the characters on the show. I know when I travel around the country, I just got back from an event in Florida, one of my favorite events that I do every year, where you actually spend time with, with the fans and the viewers of, of the shows and, and you just see how, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's the reason why these shows are still on the air and doing so well, you know? Like Days of Our Lives just got picked up for another two years. Wow, <laughs> I, that show can't go off. I know they always threaten it, and you're like, well, yeah, but look, these I, shows are are people's lives. Like, yeah. you end that, you end, like you said, generations. Um, have you ever slept with a fan or two? No, never. No. I know that I did. I know behavioral experts will see that I looked up into the left, which means that I lied when I said that. But I really do. I yeah, I was like, I don't know. I had, you know what I had to do there? I had to go back into like my early early like when i was 19 and first got on the show and thought i was hot shit and was like did i did i sleep with a fan and then no i did not I, I did not no and you looked up again though 
right when you said I, I did not, I, you looked I, up. <laughs> because I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling the archives. As, no. You, as you speak, no. Okay, fine. I'm going to believe you, but I wouldn't judge you if you did, because if I was a man, I would be like, I would take advantage of it. I do think that there is a time like you actually, because of being in a relationship, it's funny because now I'm, you know, I'm engaged to Miles, who you know. Yes. Also directed. Who I love. He's, he's an awesome dude, by the way. I love that. <laughs> he's a dude, dude. And he's he's awesome. And he actually loved you. He loves I love, you. I love spending yeah. those days on set with him. He's, I really enjoy his company. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. But I, I'll tell you, um, there there is a point I think when you've been single or not and you've been out of a relationship like now if I think about being single like because obviously Miles and I are probably a, a unique couple as far as we're pretty passionate <laughs> we can get pretty angry you? um oh, yeah, me I now I can't see that at all I'm so can't. chill <laughs> like what the fuck did you just say <laughs> That's why, that's why we've always gotten along like on set and off because like you are the antithesis of me so i i look to you to help me maybe come out of my my shell a little bit maybe i just kept reaching over like squeezing your muscles God. do you mind if i do this is this incorrect or Remember, right? and after i mean i look i was single at the time and i was like no go ahead whatever it feels good i don't it's, it releases it releases uh oxytocin right to feel good yeah it's it's really bad because i swear to god i'm a me, me dude and everyone's gonna be like so what yeah we all know this oh, yeah. <laughs> sadie's the worst um <laughs> it's really bad but there is a point where you do like wake up and you think i already know what happens when i have a one night stand or i already know you know i that's not, okay that's it's not a, fun anymore right that's a great point i I mean this, and I've said this, this is not me putting on a show. I've said this in private with my closest friends, and, and this is the honest to God truth. That's one of the reasons, in fact, one of the, it's the reason why it never, those one night, that one night stand life never really appealed to me because I've always been like the morning after guy, meaning whether it's a night of boozing or a night, a one night stand, for some, call it a curse maybe, but I always kind of project into the future like how is this gonna go tomorrow morning like do i want to wake up next to this person do i and you're always like hung over because you hooked yeah, up hung over like, and there's that it's, awkwardness it's a shame for a reason now i've been in both places they i've woken up in in the girl's house the woman's house and then they've woken up in mine and both are equally either did you always make coffee did you offer breakfast yes or did you go gotta go to the gym to my detriment, i have a funny story this happened i'm not gonna name time or place because i'll incriminate her or myself or whatever people will try to do connect the dots so i'll just say once it happened okay uh that i i was actually really i was very young and i'll say it was before ari but this was uh this is just kind of who i guess i am inherently it was the first time, like I've had one night stands before, but it always like around three, four, maybe even 5 a.m. Like she's always gone home or I've gone home type right. deal. But this was the first time that like full on sun is up. Oh. You know? yeah. I'm in uncharted territory. She's like in my bed and I'm going, what do I do? Do I, do I go to like Starbucks and grab us some coffee? Do I make breakfast? And I remember like, she just kind of woke up and I was like, you know, do I, do I, do we get morning booty? Do you, do, do you go for yeah, morning like, booty what, or like? What I'm yeah. trying to say is like, what? I mean, the, the five alarm alert is going on in my head. I'm like, what happens now? And I remember she just kind of got up. She'd done it maybe a few times more than me. And she, <laughs> ready. she, she kind of like got, she kind of got up and gave me a kiss on the cheek and got dressed and was out of there. And I'm like, do I, hey, do you want to go somewhere? And she was sweet, but she's like, no, no. And she's like, left. She's and like, I, chill out, dude. Okay. We just I, fucked. And I kind right? of looked, she like left me in my room. I was like, oh, oh okay. Like, like, oh my God. <laughs> she used you, Kyle. I was like, I she feel, used you. Oh my God. I was like, this is, this is, ooh, she, you know? And, and I was like, okay, that's like, welcome to the real world, dude. This is, this is how it goes. 
So, but anyway, that's so called I, a bonus. Do you understand? That's I guess. Well, I've heard this as an adult since, you know, with <laughs> friends and whatnot. Look, some people have no, again, no judgment for me, but some people just, just like, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? It's just like you had sex, you get a time, and then you go home, and that's it. And I'm like, I know, but that doesn't that feel weird to you? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I always do it because I, it, like when I would start dating someone and we slept together, I would be like, yeah, I'm not spending the night at your house. Um, like, cause I wanted to have the upper hand because, you know, <laughs> men don't want you to be like clingy. And I would go, I remember Miles was like, you could spend the night. And I was like, no, absolutely not. And I'm was, not spending the night at your house. You're ew, gross. House no, no, no. He, No. I actually didn't have, because of Griffin, because of being a single mom, yeah. I, I really, I was kind of a serial monogamous. And then in between, I <clears throat> wasn't. Um, oh, I, I should air quote that because it's true. But um, I couldn't bring them home per se. And also like, I wanted to make sure that they had to deal with me. And, and if a guy was like, let's go to breakfast, if I really liked him, he's really chill. That's like the guy you, you know, you probably don't even smoke pot. I don't imagine you to be a pot smoker. But I would, yeah, I mean, I would say that the, the, the two women that I had the longest, obviously Ari, that the relationship and marriage with subsequently, right. and, and then my next girlfriend after that for four plus years or whatever it was, um, you know, lived together in Manhattan, lived together in LA, the whole thing. But I would say, the two women that actually stayed the night and we all had a great morning. We all, right. two of us, both of us, we all of us, time. Yeah. everybody that stayed. <laughs> um, no, that we both like had a great morning afterwards. Those are the two women that I ended up having long-term relationships with, you know, right. so um, I, maybe that's a thing. Don't uh, you think like, so, cause you know, Miles, like Miles and I met and we were like angry that we liked each other so much. Like I was well, like, I, no, I, I not relate. you. <laughs> but I can relate to that in, in a sense. That's a, that's a good point. I remember yeah. like I was doing this. Now keep in mind, I was doing this tongue in cheek to a to a certain extent. But I remember when I really started to fall for so and so that I'm with, you know, as we speak. Um, I was like, I don't. It's like, damn it, I don't want to give my ex wife the satisfaction. <laughs> oh my god! Like I was like, damn it. <laughs> How close are they? They're they're getting close. I just not like they've known each other for years. I think. So what they, happened? She like bumps into this girl and goes, "Wow, you're pretty." They, big they met. And they're nice. They, so Ari, Ari, you know, she, she has her main residence is up in Lake Tahoe, beautiful freaking house. I don't blame her that she lives up there, but she works down here on days of her lives on a consistent basis. So she needs like mm -hmm. a trash pad down here. Um, so she lives about ten minutes from me, and the place that she lives in, or like the, the condo building that she lives in. I call it Melrose Place because like her neighbors, her immediate neighbors, like all are kind of the same age and they all get along. What, what city is it? Uh, Westlake Village. Westlake. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah I'm, I'm like, I know there's pocket places. I've yeah, been so I'm like, Jesus Christ. It, yeah. So it's like this cool little, you know, they have Taco Tuesdays, like I said, together in these little impromptu parties all the time. So Ari, now, you know, my girl right now doesn't, she doesn't live in that place, but she's a friend of people that live in that place. So she's always invited in a, and is always there at these little parties. So, sorry, that's the backstory, which leads me to my point, which is Ari and her started hanging out a lot and, and getting to know each other and, and, you know, realize that they're like really like each other and have a lot in common and, and have a great time together. And that's when, you know, Ari was like, God, you know, she, you know, I know Kyle so well, and I think that they'd really get along type deal so and that's look that says a lot about Ari too because look I'm really good friends with her boyfriend now of, oh I didn't get her six years plus um like I go like for New Year's I went up and and was with Ari and and her boyfriend Sean and Izzy and some other friends up in their place in Tahoe and we all it's just a modern family type deal you know we all get along it's don't you think okay so new rule I love the fact that it's, and I agree with this and I tried to be like this with my ex-husband and um, it's very sad that he didn't, he, we were religious, we were Jehovah's Witnesses, so there's more going on, but new rule is, you're right, everyone should, I think, say, not only say, you know, on speaking terms, but I think it's even better to be friends 
to keep the friendship yes. and with the partner. Um, I just went to visit my family in Dana Point, and my cousin was there with his with his new girlfriend who has a kid and then with his baby mama who I love and and her grandma because they're doing a going away party and then the new girl that Laurel that he's dating and moving to um Colorado with had her baby daddy there and the grandparents and everyone was like getting along so well and like I was excited to see them all. And then my grandparents or my aunt and uncle were there. And I was like, that's the way it should be. But even yeah. better, if they fix up, I mean, you already know someone really well. So it is funny. If, I mean, but you're a good guy. So not everyone I, has listen, such good me. feelings. I, I'm, I'm very well aware and very grateful, do not take it for granted, that I am in a very unorthodox situation in terms of my relationship with my ex-wife, who that's even kind of hard to say, right. and and her boyfriend, and like we all get along. I, I think it's very important, and I do really mean this when I say that we have a very unorthodox situation. Everybody's got a different situation. I think that, and we, we, we did speak about this before, but I think it's worth repeating that, you know, it's, if you have a very traumatic situation with your ex um, and, you know, let's even just, let's, let, let's even just call it what it is, what it is. Let's say they're even a dangerous human being, you know, I, not, it's, it's not one size fits all. You know, I think ultimately what I'm trying to say um, is put, put your child first, whatever that means for you. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, this is what you need to do. Cause that's bullshit. I'm not going to tell anybody what they need to do. What I humbly believe is that put your child first. What is the best scenario, environment, series of circumstances, whatever it is for my kid. And then whatever that is for you, like in the process of like deductive reasoning, whatever puts your kid in the best possible situation, do that, you know? Right. And I think that people, so the antithesis of what, what that is and what I'm trying to say is people don't do that. They don't put the needs, you know, the importance of the needs of their kid first and it's all about them and they end up, the, the child ends up traumatized, you know? And you don't, don't pass the trauma down. You know, don't you think I, I have this theory and it, it's so far proven true is whenever you talk to someone and they go, oh yeah, but my ex is horrible. Like in there, they talk about all their relationships and they're like, oh, she was a crazy person. He was a whack job. He was abusive. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, some of my exes I'm like, but like, I still talk to them. I still love them. Well, look, well, look, and look, but that's, the, that's good. That's really good for you. You know, I mean, I, even Griffin's dad, I like I'm just, yeah, I loved I'm, his dad. I really, I think it's very important. That, Isn't uh, that a red flag though? If you meet no, someone. No, 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 I don't think it is at all. I, I think that, look, I want to, I, I really want to hold a space for people that are, that would be listening to this going like, but you don't understand. Like I can't right. talk to my ex-husband or my ex-wife. Well, but that's how it was with my ex, right. You know? And so right. I think we need to honor that. I really do. But there's only one of those. Don't you feel like, okay, you, you, everyone can say they had that one ex that was really crazy. Well, yeah. But if the first thing I, I did notice, like dating in right. LA, they're like, oh, all actresses are crazy. All the, and I'm like, actually, a lot of them are really hardworking and it can be dramatic and be crazy, stressed crazy out, but is, everyone's crazy. No, like, crazy, I, that's what, crazy is a word that's thrown around right. like crazy. <laughs> right. But what, I think what, what to, to put a button on, on the thought I was just having, you know, if you're one of those people like, you don't understand, I mm -hmm. can't talk to my ex. Like it's a thing that's like, like I hold a space for you with that. That's totally cool. What I'm saying is just, you know, I'm not saying lie about it, but keep in mind when you're painting the picture to your child about their parent. I agree with this so much. You know, don't, it's not fair to the kid to paint a picture that could traumatize that child. You know, at so young, I mean, there can be a time, and this is, look, I, I'm not, I want to speak out of my ass right now because I'm not qualified to talk to this about, to speak to this or talk about it. But I think ultimately, look, if there's a time when the kid has grown up and you can have a serious conversation and say, 
your father or your mother is X, Y, Z, you know, that's fine. But as long as you're objective, I think that, I don't think it's fair to the kid to, to paint a picture of your ex that is, is detrimental or, or yeah. potentially traumatic for the child. Well, and I always said to Griffin, like, I would say, you know what? It's so sad that your dad isn't at a good place in his life to not be with you, but your dad was my high school sweetheart. I was in love with him. He's magical. He's smart. He's funny. And good on you for doing that. Good on I you. just never believed in. So even when he'd be like, my dad's a jerk. I go, no, your dad grew up in this way. And right now I wish he did something differently. Um, but it's, he's obviously, this speaks to him not seeing you speaks to the fact that he's suffering. Now, let me ask you a question. That's important. You just said right there, you're not lying, correct? Well, yeah, not no, at all. So yeah. you're, not, you're not lying and you're not deceiving and you're not right. painting a false picture. I think it's just, and I'm, I'm not trying to be like psychology 101 here, but what I'm saying is you're not lying. You're not painting a false picture. You're not painting, painting a fantasy. You are choosing your, your thoughts and your words in such a way that you're like, these are the facts and you can, you can, you know, be led to your own decisions about this and your own thoughts and feelings. I'm not going to implant right. hate and vitriol and judgment in you. And but sometimes I want to tell him like, cause he's going through this phase where he, he's like, you know, kind of obsessed with wanting to, his dad died like two years ago of wanting to know who his dad was. And, oh. and he like wanting a reason why his dad had such a tough time. And I always have this urge, like I want to sit down and say, okay, I know I said all this great stuff about your dad, but here's the other story that I didn't want to share with you. And I kind of went to write something about it. And then I realized, I don't know. I don't know if that's really important. If that, unless like you're going, wow, this, your dad's abusive and he's going to come get you and you have to be aware. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's sort of like, why do that? Unless they really, even with Griffin, I'm like, you know what? Do you really need to know? Like, I, don't, I don't know the answer. To I, I don't know if that, I, everyone has to do it for themselves, but I do think that single parents shoot themselves in the foot by not being, you know, nice about their ex. I think that, I think that's a horrible that's, thing, right? That's what, that's, that's what I feel. It, you know, I can't, I think I've, I've reached the end of I, I can't speak to this. Like I keep saying, I'm, I've reached the end of my, you know, my thoughts about it because I don't want to, I don't want to hurt any, you know, be disrespectful to people that are in that situation. Right. You know? So all I can say is I'm going to repeat what you just said, because I really think that if gun to my head, give me an answer. I think that what you just said is the answer to each their own. Everybody's different. But what I humbly would say, which is what you just said is there's a way of talking about a, a kid's father or mother or, you know, the ex, the other parent. There's a way of talking about the other parent to your child in a very objective way, which doesn't pass judgment and hate and vitriol and everything where it's like, look, your parent, other parent was unfortunately did this, 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 and this, and this is why they're not in your life. You know, and that's just stating facts. Right. It might hurt the child. It might, they might ask why and everything, but I think honesty is the most important thing. But honesty that is not filtered through one's own filters and one's own judgments and one's own views of the other mm -hmm. person. I'm talking about pure, <laughs> pure unadul unadulterated truth is very hard to come by these days. If you have well, and maybe it doesn't have to be, I love what you're saying right now. Cause I'm, I think we're on the same ship yeah. for sure is I don't think you actually have to tell them in detail. It's I like don't tell Izzy everything about everything. Even right. Question. I never shut her down. Right. But I, I, we have a conversation about it. And, and if it gets to a point where I make a choice as a parent, not to have a conversation with her, I say, honey, look, and I, I don't have a script for this, but it's, it, it, you know, each circumstance is, is individual, but it's something, it all is kind of something to the effect of, look, honey, I, I get why you want to know this. And I've told you everything that I can about it. Um, I'm not shutting it down right now to be disrespectful, but this is something that I'm just not ready to have. This is a conversation I'm not ready to have with you right now. Just like you don't want to watch, you don't want your kid to watch porn at the moment. You know, it's like, 
do you want them to You're not buying her porn yet no should, are that, you? should i should i introduce her to like like <laughs> only fans get her started early <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah kyle you are honestly it's it's like really difficult for me because you're just a really perfect specimen. No, I know no, you don't want to no, hear I'm that. Not. I'm not. And, in and LA terms, so let's give you this. In LA terms, you're a perfect specimen of niceness. That you know how lucky she is to have you as her dad, and how lucky am I that you came on my show and kept me in line by saying all the lovely nice things that I do think people should hear and. Um, Thank you so you, much. My pleasure. I'll leave you with this. First okay, good. All, thank you for it. was so good to see your face again to catch up. You, you're, you're a light in my life. You just, you, you make Aww. things, you always make things more exciting. <laughs> no, I'm going to take that. <laughs> I think, I think to thank you for your generous compliments. I will respond to that by first saying thank you. I will take them. But on, but on top of that, I, like everybody else, am a work in progress. And I think that if I can leave this, you know, leave something with anybody. It's like, be a work in progress and honor that. And, but as long as you're leading with, if with, with authenticity and truth and kindness, and I don't mean to be Pollyanna pie in the sky BS. I think the world needs more authenticity right now. And if you can honor the fact that, that you and me and everybody is just a work in progress and we're doing the best we can and to hold a space like that for people, whether you're a single parent or, or anything, just, honor that. And yeah, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to have these conversations that I quite frankly have never had on a public <laughs> forum before. So thank great. you so much. Well, everything you said, I'm like, yes, yeah, spot on. That's great. So, kiss that like, smash that subscribe and share me.